this starts with the abdominal ultrasound because today Dr. Dietrich came and handed over some of the most important thing. He handed over the video CD of his abdominal ultrasound. So this is the video CD of abdominal ultrasound. He has given me a couple of co copies. And those who are able to grab it first because there are about 15 or 20 left, with, he could bring only 15, 20. So this is all for those. But this is a very interesting uh, CD, very useful CD. And I believe that all those people who are doing abdominal ultrasound should be able to do endoscopic ultrasound. And all those people who want to learn endoscopic ultrasound should first uh, start with an abdominal ultrasound. At if they. And hence we start with one of the first case with abdominal ultrasound. But in the meantime, this is the portal vein thrombus case in which we have offered thrombolysis about two years back. And this was the thrombus which was present. We have punctured this thrombus with the help of a needle. And this needle was placed within the, uh, within the mesentric vein. Dr. And Dr. the mesentric vein was punctured. So Thank we you. punctured the mesentric vein from second part of duodenum. And once we punctured the mesentric vein, by endoscopic ultrasound in a case of acute portal vein thrombosis and mesentric vein thrombosis, we place this catheter. We place the catheter within the mesentric vein and this catheter was then connected to the nose. So the endoscopic ultrasound guided puncture of the mesentric vein was done. A guide wire was placed in one of the tributaries of the mesentric vein and then we started cannula. We put in a cannula over the guide wire and did a mesentric vein thrombolysis. And this was the cannula was advanced into this is the way the cannula was advanced into the mesentric vein and then the thrombolysis was started. So the total thrombolysis was done for 48 hours. And then this is the case and now I want to show what is the effect of the thrombolysis. The patient at that time survived an imminent mesentric vein thrombosis and today we want to show you the result of this thrombolysis because the patient has come to us in a follow-up after two years. So Dr. Dietrich, you are on a case of mesentric vein thrombolysis two years after infusion. Ship. We are ready. <coughs> Good morning. So, dear Malay, Dr. Sharma, uh, ladies and gentlemen, first of all, thank you for the opportunity to be here in India and to discuss such interesting cases. In the case of portal vein thrombosis, we would need to follow up splenomegaly, ascites, collaterals, and we have to look if there is still any thrombus in portal vein, splenic vein, or superior mesenteric vein. So first of all, we start quite nicely um, to see uh, the uh, spleen and the spleen size is below 12 centimeters, so the size is normal. We will use um, color Doppler imaging and be always aware that we will reduce the V scale. You can see on the left to somewhat like 5 to 7 centimeters per second. And we can see quite a lot of collaterals between the spleen, splenic vessels and between the renal vessels those collaterals are somewhat um, uh, physiologic and uh, with portal vein thrombosis we can uh, see them quite nicely. So spleen is not enlarged and we see collaterals in the hilum. Second, right now um, I put the transducer just below the sternum and I'd like to follow the, um, I'd like to follow the course of the splenic vein which is dilated and shows differences in diameter. And by following the uh, splenic um, vein we can see a part of thrombus next to the arrow right on here. 
In this case, we would be interested if that... Take a breath, please. Stop. Okay. Uh, we would be interested if that part of the thrombus is still perfused or not, if there is arterial perfusion, uh, breathe normal. Right on, we can see in between the um, markers still um, a little bit of expansive thrombus in the splenic vein. But this thrombus is not echo-free, it's not hypoechoic, it's somewhat echoic. That means this thrombus is old. And uh, the size of thrombus is about 3 to 2 centimeters, as we can see here. And I'm sure um, uh, Dr. Anand Sahai will later show us uh, quite nicely uh, that uh, part of the thrombus. But in this case, you can see a little bit of lumen next to the arrow. Can you see in the audience? right on here and we can follow uh, the splenic vein with changes of diameter and uh, the uh, portal vein can be nicely displayed here and with a sensitive color flow we can see that this is recanalized very good treatment success so go uh, turn to the left side a little bit more right now uh, stretch your leg Okay, that's fine. From intercostally, uh, we, uh, we will um, scan uh, the portal vein and uh, we, will we are looking for collaterals. So here you can see quite nicely the liver hilum. And you can see more vessel than expected. And by putting in the color, Lowering the V scale, take a breath, stop. We can nicely depict a huge amount of vessels in the liver hilum. So collaterals have been forming. And if we look for the pancreatic head, which is um, in the screen right on here, you can see even spontaneous spontaneously vessels inside of the pancreatic head so we have been f there has been uh, collaterals forming in the um, in the uh, pancreatic head and uh, what is also nicely to be seen that next to the gallbladder uh, we can see such uh, gallbladder varices uh, next to the arrow um, and so there have been quite a lot of collaterals forming up to now no ascites I've been looking downward to Douglas space and perisplenic and perihepatic collaterals in the liver hilum in the hepatodudinal ligament in the pancreas and uh, around the gallbladder there is still uh, some thrombus i have shown you uh, in the splenic um, in the splenic uh, vein and um, in s as we uh, as we have seen 3 to 2 centimeters and we might quantify also uh, the flow in the uh, in the portal vein and um, so i put in the color don't breathe, stop, stop breathing. We can put in... Can, can you see gastric varices by percutaneous ultrasound? Sorry? Um, we can see gastric var varices by ultrasound, but mostly we can see uh, those... Um, uh, those um, veins uh, if we look for the stomach. So I'm going for the spleen. I put from lateral upward to the stomach wall. Put in the color. Don't breathe, don't move, don't breathe, don't move. And if you look for 
such vessels like this one, it's not very pronounced, but those are fundus varices. So what we have seen up to now is a thrombus in the splenic vein, collaterals, no ascites, no splenomegaly. And we have seen um, um, a flow in the portal vein, and most of the portal vein and superior mesenteric vein have been recanalized. So the success is amazing. And the thrombus was echoic, that means old. It's a little bit expansive and I'm not quite sure, at least at home I would use contrast to see if there's arterial perfusion of that thrombus. If there's arterial perfusion, it means neoplastic. If there is no perfusion, it means um, appositional thrombus. But she's, she's two years out. Yeah. Two years. There was a neoplastic two years later. I'm, I'm pretty sure it, uh, uh, it should be appositional uh, thrombus, and we will do the endoscopic ultrasound, but we might have a look to that part of the thrombus, uh, how does it look. So uh, that would be my part from the transcutaneous ultrasound, if you could agree on that. Agree. Happy. <laughs> so, and uh, I guess right now we will change to endoscopic ultrasound to see all that from a closer view. Thank you so much. Very good. Good. Um, yeah, uh, Anand Sahai will. Wait, wait a minute, Dr. Dietrich. Oh. Sorry, I have a couple of questions. Yeah. Do you think the thrombolysis has been satisfactory? In this case, there was a unique thing done, and that was thrombolysis of the mesentic vein because there was imminent gangrene. So we put in a catheter into mesentic vein, infused it for about 48 hours and then the pain improved. She had melena, we gave transfusion. So at that time, whole of the mesentric vein, portal vein, and were all dilated. So I want to ask, what has happened to the dilatation? Has it come back or it has not come back? Yeah, so uh, first of all, you have been uh, telling that there was gangrene in the intestine. Imminent. Yeah. imminent gangrene in the intestine. Yes. And what we have and seen... Massive dilatation of portal vein, yeah. 20 mm, yeah. uh, vein, and this splenic vein. Yeah, and this dilatation has been due to um, the uh, thrombus. Right now, all kinds of... Um, all parts of the uh, portal vein system except one little part of the splenic vein which is thrombosed is recanalized so amazing success second I've been looking downward to the um, uh, to the um, terminal ilium and there is no thickening of the bowel wall so that has recovered so that was two years back. Yeah. Okay. Second thing is, does it not look unusual? Uh, do you think this is an unusual case? We have six such cases now of thrombosis within the portal vein, especially in this season after infection or fever, and sometimes in people who go to high altitude, and when they come down from high altitude, they have three things. Number one is, in India, they go to around 25th Cargill, Cargill War, Cargill. They go to very high altitude, then they come down, and then they get these kind of problems. So, because we will show you another case after this, and this we will doc ask again uh, Dr. Anansa and Dietrich to see, because that has got acute portal vein thrombosis. In a couple of minutes, we will show you that case. But we will show you these are the cases which are coming to us. They go to high altitude and they get when they come down three things. Number one is cardiac. Yeah. Number two is cerebral and yeah. number three is mesentric venous thrombosis. So this is the least common. So even when they come down from very high altitude because probably of polycythemia or all this, we will get the hematologist. So one question is, uh, do you think we should offer bolus therapy or some sort of thrombolytic agent in cases where there is imminent 
thrombosis of the portal venous system with a 25 gauge needle. Okay, I love that idea because there is no evidence based medical treatment of portal vein thrombosis of unknown origin. Normally, you have appendicitis, a chronic abs with abscesses or peridiverticulitis in the older ones, you, so you have reasons, and uh, there is no standard treatment, but you treat the, re uh, the uh, original um, disease. In that case, I think it's uh, intriguing to do what you are telling, uh, to make uh, local thrombolysis, and as we can see, all that thrombus went away except a uh, short thrombus of 3.3 uh, centimeters uh, in the splenic vein. So that was amazing and a good treatment. Yes, one should try. We kept the catheter for two days. Why? Because we, we, were, we didn't know what to do. We were giving continuous catheter thrombolysis at that time. But usually when they do thrombolysis, it's one shot? There are two types of thrombolytic agent. One is a fast thrombolytic agent. One is just a bolus, and one is streptokinase given as continuous infusion. As a continu continuous, continuous, continuous infusion. infusion. So we were not sure whether a bolus will be enough. Okay. Mm. And we gave continuous infusion, and that the number of cases is not very high. Only six cases so far we have. Um, impressive. So we have three cases we have given continuous infusion. The problem is that we are puncturing the mesenteric vein and we want to go to the mesenteric vein through the pancreas because we want a window. At the time of removal of the catheter, there will be bleeding. Can't go through the liver? Hmm? Can't go through the liver? Uh, sure. The superior mesenteric vein is uh, down, uh, downward, so... <laughs> now, that is an interesting question you have raised, Anand. Why didn't we go through the liver? Because Dr. Dietrich, between the three veins, splenic vein, superior mesenteric vein and portal vein, which one would you like to thrombolyze? Um, difficult, um, uh, difficult... She had acute portal vein thrombosis. See, the reason I think the thrombus starts from below of yeah, yeah. yeah. and the most important gangrene would be from yes, superior mesenteric vein. Yeah. Yeah. So, if I offer thrombolysis within the portal vein, yeah. the effect may not go down. No, 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 no. Yeah. So, that is why, to me, saving the superior mesenteric vein was the most important thing rather than saving the portal yeah. vein. Did you put the catheter in the thrombus or No. The thrombus? When we went through the thrombus, the guide wire went into a tributary, then the cannula went into the tributary, and when we pushed in contrast, mm -hmm. we could see the contrast going into the tributary of the mesenteric vein, and then we were sure, and then we left that. And, and so the flow was going from distal, across the thrombus, from the nose, into the portal vein. across the thrombus, into the, portal into the mesenteric vein, and, then into the and, the strepto vein. and whatever was flowing towards mm. the portal vein. I love the idea to transverse any parenchymal organ because of bleeding. I totally agree. Second, what is interesting, if you see here the portal vein, it has a big diameter and here is a stop inside of the liver. You can see that um, change of diameter. That means there has been the altitude, but I also believe that there has been some sort of congenital disposition for that lady, because here right now you have a stop of um, um, a, a change of diameter of the portal vein. So they are coming a few things together. I love that approach, what you have been doing. Uh, in our department, I would have been thinking, why not introducing a catheter uh, transhepatic and then with the um, with the guide wire going into that different vessel, superior mesenteric vein, splenic vein, and uh, to make a, a little bit shorter, I would go for six hours or something like yes. that, um, that might, I, I have no idea because uh, it's so rare what, what you have thought of these approaches, the problem was that the splenic vein thrombolysis, I had no tissue when I was touching the splenic vein. Yeah. And again, I and I did not think 
at that time that puncturing the splenic vein was a good idea yeah compared to splenic vein through the stomach the mesenteric vein puncture through the duodenum was easier because second thing is the reason i did not puncture the portal vein was that i did not know at that time whether i can go all the way to the tributary because i wanted the infusion to start from below upwards and not from above downwards i love i love all that pathophysiological thinking and it was so successful in the superior mesenteric vein but we still can see a little bit of uh, thrombus is still in the splenic vein but there is no splenomegaly and there are the collaterals which have been opened between splenic veins and renal veins so it's a uh, um, it's a good shunting physiological shunting so the question is she is on anticoagulants for the last two years yeah comedy so does she need to be on lifelong anticoagulant because what you mentioned just now is just like a colidocal cyst so this is an abnormal colidocal dilatation of the portal vein something like that congenital as you said but, but she came, she lived a long time at higher altitude and came down no no she was not in one we have got six Never cases mind. but i am mentioning because she no reason. she she doesn't have a reason did you do the hematology uh, hematology we did all hematological evaluation oh, okay. and that way. so that is the uh, case first case of the day thank you very much dr dietrich thank you so much there is already a case. demand for your uh, cd so yeah. this <laughs> so for abdominal ultrasound and we are glad that we started uh, with right. such a basic basic demonstration on the first case if i would be allowed all that information on the dvd is free available on the european federation of societies for ultrasound medicine and biology website okay. so if you go to efsum website you can retrieve all that videos so if people are interested in lecturing i would love uh, if they use that uh, efsum website Thank you to be